Think about what could happen if you were to continue on this path. Think about the risk of things like heart disease and strokes, what that means for you, but not just for you, but the loved ones around you. It's your body, your choice. You want to smoke cigarettes, go bungee jumping, do whatever you want, right? As a physician, all I can do is just share with you the, the specialized knowledge and experience I have and show you the science and say, look, people in your position who do X, Y, and Z, these are what's likely to befall you. And, you know, and I ask them about, you know, what do they want to do in life? What do they want to accomplish? Do you know, want to see their grandkids grow up? Do they want to, and, you know, and how does being healthy play into that? And for some people, they don't care. And for them, it's like, why are you coming to see a doctor? To steal a line, and at this point, I don't even know who I'm stealing it from, but um, nothing tastes as good as healthy feels. And that's so true. And a lot of times, you can't really register that until you start to feel healthy. So once we can get you off of those certain addictive foods, even if it's just temporarily, even if we just say, three weeks, give me three weeks, no cheese for three weeks, no bacon for cheese, no bacon for three weeks, whatever it is. Um, I think that once someone can feel that, like, oh, I don't miss that anymore because this feels great. That didn't taste that great by comparison. I think if I said, I'm never going to eat cheese again, there's, I couldn't do it because I just love the creaminess of it. I love, I love just like a milky coffee and I love a cheesy pizza and I frankly love wine and cheese at night, right? So instead of saying, I'm never going to have that again, I thought, I'm just going to investigate. I'm going to make this a sport and I'm going to look around and see what's available insofar as plant-based cheeses. So lo and behold, there's some awesome ones. Thank God, because it made my life a lot easier. So I discovered cheeses that melt really well on burritos and pizza. I found cheeses that are really good with wine on crackers. I found delicious milks and ice cream and things like that. So instead of the mindset of hardcore discipline, I'm just going to make this a fun thing and see what I can add into my life and then I don't need that other stuff. And it was just easier for me. People get used to foods they've grown up with um, and those tastes, people, people sort of uh, acquire, acquire those sorts of tastes over, over a period of time and it can be very, very difficult for people to give these foods up. It can be an emotional thing as well because it might be associated with family time or social time uh, with friends. but. The way I the way I sort of explain to people is think about think about the rest of your life. Think about what could happen if you were to continue on this path. Think about the risk of things like heart disease and strokes, what that means for you, but not just for you, but the loved ones around you, how they would feel if if they saw that you're suffering these sorts of health issues. Um, and also, very importantly, you may have children who, who you're looking after and are growing up, you know, would you want them to be in such a situation as well? So really it's trying to help people um, to build a new relationship with food, getting back, getting down to the core of what's really important to them. And I think that's what could hopefully help a, a fundamental shift in their understanding and their practice. I was a cheating vegan. I'd go to a party and I'd see the little camembert and because I was just doing it just for my health, I would sneak a little bit of it. And it, 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 that took a long time for me to finally get that. There's more cruelty in dairy in the dairy industry than there is in, in, just, in the meat industry. It's really a horrific industry. And when I finally got that, the, the, the cruelty that's involved, I could no longer condone the consumption of dairy for myself. And I had to figure out how to do that. We're starting a new revolution. We call it the plant dairy revolution. And we're trying to redefine dairy it's not just coming from animals, but also coming from plants. The future of dairy is plant-based and we're leading the way. For people who say that they could never give up meat and cheese because they love it so much, I'd say to them, I was you. I used to feel exactly the same. I thought, how could I possibly give up my, you know, my cheesecake or my pan fried fish? You know, I thought life wouldn't be worth living. But then I realized that actually it's so much easier than I ever imagined. 
and I think it's really important to understand as well that your taste buds do begin to alter over time and so does your gut microbiome so that after about a month or so you're going to be craving really different things no longer are you going to want the oily, salty, sugary, meaty foods that you used to crave. You're going to really start to enjoy all of the flavors and the benefits of whole, real plant foods. So I'd really encourage you to push past that pain barrier and that initial reluctance and just go for it and then see how you feel after just four weeks. And I promise you, you won't regret it. I believe the most important ingredient in any healthy or, or uh, longevity diet is taste. Uh, if I can tell you that the, the healthiest food in the world is, is fermented tofu, but if you don't like fermented tofu, you ain't gonna eat it. There are phenomenal sources. I like to think the Blue Zones website, we have about 150 plant-based recipes that are easy to make. Just go taste five of them. Don't take my word for it. Don't take the word of, of 10,000 centenarians around the world who've eaten mostly a plant-based diet. Make the effort to try a Sardinian minestrone or an Icarian stew. We have a great recipe for that, which is black-eyed peas and fennel and extra virgin olive oil. And it's meaty and delicious and hearty and it, it, it's, it's, it satisfies you. Uh, try that. Learn how to make five plant-based dishes that are good for you, good for your family, that you're going to like and you don't have to think about it anymore. The key thing to understand with these food groups, particularly the dairy, the cheese, the eggs and the meat, is that whilst they may taste good, they are so damaging towards our health. You love these foods because they're energy dense and the body is designed to adore foods that are high energy. And no more so will you see high energy rich foods than in the dairy and the cheese and the milk products. And this is because they are concentrated forms of fat and our body and our tongue particularly our taste buds gravitate towards that so when we try and break away from that and we introduce foods that aren't as calorie dense that is they don't have as much energy in them per gram such as the whole foods like the potatoes the pumpkin and the corn there's this automatic reflex where your body and particularly your taste buds will say you know this isn't as energy rich i don't like it i'm going to revert back to what I, what I know will give me that kick. But the great thing is that it takes only a couple of weeks before your taste buds will rekindle their love of whole foods just like they do for the foods that are in the typical standard American diet. And I will often say to patients, give us a couple of weeks. Give us a couple of weeks and you'll notice that you'll drive towards those whole foods. You'll feel better. And what comes with avoiding the animal products as well as eating the plant food products is that you feel healthier. You'll lose weight, you've got more energy. And so from that perspective, it's almost then impossible to fall back into those bad habits. Hey everybody, this is Klaus. I uh, just want to come in quickly and say, firstly, thank you very much for watching this video. Secondly, I uh, wanted to talk very, very briefly about a new partnership. We partnered with a new group called NFI Diet. Uh, they provide whole food, plant-based meal guides that go a step further than anything in the past by um, completely personalizing them. Uh, the protocol is being studied at a National Institute in Europe and they're getting some amazing results, uh, including uh, rapid weight loss as well as uh, type 2 diabetes remission often within weeks. Please check out the link down below if you want to find out more. Hope you enjoy the rest of the video. I tell people that I was just the same, right? I loved meat and cheese growing up and that's really what I grew up with and um, I was a, I was, I was a, well my mom says a naughty kid. I would eat all the meats and cheeses but when she made Chinese food I would say no, no I don't want it. So I, I was there so I tell people that but you know when you realize that it's making you sick, when you actually are healthy, when you change your diet and you actually feel healthy, you try to go back there, you can't because you will feel sick. And I've had people who says oh I cannot give up meat and cheese. I'm like that's okay. We're just gonna put you on eight weeks of this, okay? And I wanna see some changes. I'm, I'm trying to treat your inflammation and your condition, get things under control, right? And let's see what happens after. And so I always say, don't fear it, just try it. Because obviously if they're coming to see me, they're desperate, they're suffering from something. So what is giving up meat and cheese for eight to 10 weeks to see how it goes? And I can tell you, majority of those patients 
have permanently changed her diet and have never gone back. Somebody asked me on a radio show the other day what I thought the biggest change was that was upsetting things in a positive sort of way. And I think they were surprised by my answer. I said, Netflix. And the person said, Netflix? I said, yeah, I'll tell you why. People find a documentary like Forks Over Knives or Food Choices or uh, Diet Fiction will be coming out in January. They find a documentary like this on Netflix and then they start binge watching in the category. Because Netflix has this thing, and if you're a subscriber, you know this. If you're interested in this, if you saw this, then you might like to watch this too. And so we get phone calls here all the time from people who say, I spent the weekend binge watching documentaries about food and I'm ready to change my diet. So sometimes that's a great way to help somebody explore because it's not particularly particularly demanding, it's not reading a big thick book that might look intimidating. So um, so I think those are some things that we can do is to just back off trying to make them convert and just get them interested in looking into it. And sometimes when people look into it, um, they find that they're willing to do all kinds of things. Look at where I ended up. So for people who think that they can't get off meat or cheese because they love it so much, join the club. Mm -hmm. I used to be that way. I grew up eating meat multiple times a day, drinking a pint of milk a day, eating cheese, eggs, bacon, you name it. I love that stuff. And I've been an athlete my whole life, so I thought to myself, well, I'm a guy, I'm an athlete, I have to eat that way, otherwise I can't get enough calories. So I told myself this story over and over and over again that I had to eat you know, animal-based foods in order to live a normal, healthy life. It wasn't until I made the mental switch and I decided that I was gonna play an experiment. That's all I was gonna do. I was gonna do a 30-day experiment. And I was gonna see what would happen to my blood glucose values and my ability to control my diabetes health by switching over to a plant-based diet. So I set on a mission for 30 days. And I switched over, I started eating lots of fruits, lots of vegetables. And the results were so dramatic and so powerful that I had no choice but to switch back. Excuse me, I had no choice but to stay eating a low-fat plant-based whole food diet and not go back to my previous diet. And so for people who have a difficult time saying, I, I can't get off of cheese, I can't get off of meat, I love this stuff so much. All I would recommend you to do is just do a simple 30-day experiment and ask yourself a simple question. I'm not trying to do something for the rest of my life. I'm literally trying to do something for the month of August, for the month of January. That's all I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna see what's gonna happen. And I think, I'm very confident that you're gonna be very pleasantly surprised by what happens within that month and then at that point, you get to decide if you're not willing to give up meat and cheese and dairy products or if it's something that you actually just don't enjoy doing because they're fundamentally different than each other. Sometimes we imagine that there are people who change their diets easily and others who have terrible trouble. But really, I think it's best to assume that everybody has a little bit of resistance. After all, ever since we're a spoon-biting toddler, we, we really don't want to, <laughs> to give up the foods that we're used to or, or to, to change our diet. So what we do is we break the diet change into two steps. The first step is just getting used to, to new foods, trying out vegan items and seeing which ones you like. And then the next step is a very short, short term period, like three weeks uh, of doing it all vegan all the time. And if it's 100% vegan, people feel like they're gonna get the health benefit. But if it's a short time, like three weeks, then people feel they can do it. And so um, no matter how skeptical a person Maybe if they want to get healthy, this is a real good way to go about it.